Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. I'm genuinely sorry you had to hear that. So, welcome back to Mayhem Moms. If you are new here, my name is Amber, and this is Mayhem Moms. So today, we did a little cute crop top cinch waist sweater. So I've had this sweater for so long, but the past year or so I haven't worn it. I mean, it's cute, it's a gorgeous color and all, but it was very boxy and it wasn't very, wasn't very flattering to say the least. So I figured why not do a little DIY and see how it turns out. And I am actually very, very surprised at how good it looks. I am just, I'm in love. I love it. So if you have an old sweater or an old shirt that's just been sitting in your closet or sitting in your dresser just collecting dust, then baby girl, you ain't got none to lose because, I mean, this is so cute. I love it. I'm gonna wear it all the time now. All the time. All the time. So if you'd like to see how I did this, then keep on watching. And if you just don't like me in general, then I suggest you just kindly exit, okay? Thanks. <laughs> okay, let's get into it. I have laid out for you everything you'll need for this fun project. An old sweater, a fabric cutting board, a shoelace, large eyelets you can find at any fabric store, a rotary fabric cutter, some scissors, sewing kit, and some ballpoint pins. Before anything, you want to put on your sweater or shirt, whatever you have chosen out, and you want to mark a spot where you want the crop top to stop. And then you want to go ahead and give yourself a couple more inches so that we can make a nice little pocket, fold it under, sew it, and put the shoelace through. Just in case, give yourself room for error. And right here, I'm just flattening the fabric, making sure all the seams are lined up nice and even. Here I'm using my marking point to measure where to start and begin and I'm using some ballpoint pins to go directly across the sweater so I know where to cut. We don't want our line looking all jaggedy and raggedy. Once you've laid down your little guideline, you can go ahead and put in your fabric cutting board directly under your clothing and start cutting. If you happen to mess up your line a little bit, no worries. We will be folding that part under so it won't be visible. And we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with our second marking we have. This is where we will be folding our fabric. I'm giving myself two inches of fabric to fold under. That way I have plenty of room for error, just in case.
and continue that all the way around the sweater. Now we can go ahead and turn our sweater or shirt inside out and using those same pins to secure the folded fabric before we begin sewing. And now begins the tedious part of this whole process, the sewing. I've placed a nice little knot at the end of my thread so I won't have to tie it off. And I decided to do a herringbone stitch. That way it isn't visible when we turn our sweater or shirt right side in. Using our threading needle to pick up the smallest amount of fabric as possible so you won't see a solid line of thread when we do wear our sweater. I'll zoom you in here in a second so you can get a better visual. Going in and cutting off that excess thread where we have our thread tied off at the very end. There we go. Now you can see what I'm doing. See, we go in and we pick up a little bit of fabric, cross it over. I love this stitch. It is super simple. And it allows the fabric a lot of movement. So it'll be perfect for our cinched waist.
Isn't that beautiful? Look at her. Oh. And that way you don't see a solid white line going all the way across your sweater. And once we insert the shoelace and the sweater is nice and cinched at the bottom, you won't even be able to tell that it's there. Now I'm going in and I'm marking where I want my large eyelets to be. And the eyelets will make your life so much easier unless you prefer sewing around a hole. That way it doesn't run. Plus they're only 250, you can't beat it. After I made my markings where I wanted the holes to be, I went in with apparently really dull scissors so here, I'm using my rotary to try and slit in a hole so I can get in better. Do not recommend doing this. If you do, please, please be very, very careful. But I am going to go back and grab better scissors. So do what I say, not what I do. There we go, grabbing better scissors that actually cut. <laughs> Just to speed things up a bit, I put the one eyelet in and I will demonstrate how I did the second one right here. The directions say you are supposed to use a certain little hammer that's meant specifically for these large eyelets, but I used pliers instead. But again, personal preference, you do whatever makes you happy, mama. To make sure it's nice and secure, I'm going to go in and clamp it down, rotating it all the way around to make sure our eyelet isn't going anywhere. And now for the fun part. We take our shoelace and a safety pin and I use the safety pin as an anchor, that way I can inch it through the hole and all the way around the fabric. It makes it so much easier. And the first eyelet that I had placed in off of camera has now come undone while I was bringing the safety pin back through the other hole. But no worries, it's an easy fix. Again, be sure to clamp it in nice and tight. 
And this is the final step, ladies. Are you ready to see the final results? Drum roll, please. Can I just say, I was not expecting it to turn out this nice. I am so, so in love. I'm going to do this with every sweater I own now. I'm going to butcher everything. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned Wednesday, my sister is posting. And I hope to see you guys back here next Monday. Don't forget, smash that like button, hit that little bell emoji, just so you can get notified every time we post so you don't miss a thing. Thank you guys, bye. Mwah.